ABS-CBN Corporation, commonly known as ABS-CBN, is a Filipino media and entertainment group based in Quezon City. It is the Philippines' largest entertainment and media conglomerate in terms of revenue, operating income, net income, assets, equity, market capitalization, and number of employees. ABS-CBN was formed by the merger of Alto Broadcasting System and Chronicle Broadcasting Network. ABS was founded in 1946 by American electronics engineer James Lindenberg as Belinao Electronics Corporation Beck. In 1952, Beck was renamed Alto Broadcasting System ABS, after Judge Antonio Quirino, brother of President Elpidio Quirino, purchased the company. The company that would later be merged with ABS was founded in 1956 as Chronicle Broadcasting Network CBN by newspaper mogul Eugenio Lopez Sr. and his brother Fernando Lopez then Vice President of the Philippines. The two companies were merged and incorporated as ABS-CBN Broadcasting Corporation on 1 February 1967, and renamed ABS-CBN Corporation in 2010 to reflect the company. S. Diversification. The common shares of ABS-CBN were first traded on the Philippine Stock Exchange in July 1992 under the ticker symbol ABS. The group owns and operates the ABS-CBN and ABS-CBN Sports Plus Action National Television Networks as well as the Radio Patrol and My Only Radio Regional Radio Networks. The ABS-CBN Television Network, in particular, is the largest contributor to the group. S revenue, generating about 50 to 60 percent of the group. S total annual revenue mainly from selling airtime to advertisers. The remaining revenue is generated from consumer sales, mainly from ABS-CBN Global Limited which distributes international television channels such as the Filipino Channel and MYX-TV and from pay TV and broadband internet provider Sky. Other companies under the ABS-CBN group are motion picture company Star Cinema, music recording label Star Music, publishing firm ABS-CBN Publishing, pay TV content provider and distributor Creative Programs, and talent agency Star Magic. Among the pay TV networks and channels under the ABS-CBN group are ABS-CBN HD, ABS-CBN News Channel, ABS-CBN Sports Plus Action HD, Cinema One, Jeepney TV, Metro Channel, Liga, and MYX. In recent years, ABS-CBN has ventured and diversified in other businesses such as cellular telephony provider ABS-CBN Mobile, video on-demand platform I Want TV, digital terrestrial television service ABS-CBN TV+, family entertainment center Kidzania Manila, and home shopping network O Shopping. ABS-CBN is also the principal owner of ABS-CBN Philharmonic Orchestra. History Beginnings The nucleus of ABS-CBN Corporation began in 1946 with Belinao Electronics Corporation, Beck. Beck was established by James Lindenberg, one of the founding fathers of Philippine Television, an American electronics engineer who went into radio equipment assembly and radio broadcasting. At that time, the largest media company was Manila Broadcasting, with DZRH as the leading radio station. In 1949, James Lindenberg shifted Belinao to radio broadcasting with DZBC and masterminded the introduction of television to the country in 1953. In 1951, Lindenberg partnered with Antonio Quirino, brother of then Philippine President Elpidio Quirino, in order to try their hand at television broadcasting. In 1952, Beck was renamed as Alto Broadcasting System or ABS with Alto Sales Corporation as its corporate name. Alto was a contraction of Quirino's and his wife's first names, Tony and Alayla. Though they had little money and resources, ABS was able to put up its TV tower by July 1953 and import some 300 television sets. The initial test broadcasts began on September of the same year. The very first full-blown broadcast, however, was on 23 October 1953, of a party in Tony Quirino's humble abode. The television station was known as DZAQ-TV. Merger in turn, on 24 September 1956, the Chronicle Broadcasting Network, CBN, was organized. 
The network was owned by Don Eugenio Lopez Sr. and the then Philippine Vice President Fernando Lopez, and later on launched its very own TV station, DZXL TV9. The following year, Don Eugenio acquired ABS from Quirino and Lindenberg. However, it was only on 1 February 1967, that the corporate name was changed to ABS-CBN Broadcasting Corporation to reflect the merger, before it was named ABS-CBN Broadcasting Corporation. The name was reverted to the precursor of the network, Belinao Electronics Corporation or BEC, but the ABS-CBN brand was first used in 1961. In 1958 the network's new headquarters at Roxas Boulevard was inaugurated, and all radio and television operations were consolidated into its two buildings, the radio stations at the Chronicle Building at Aduana Street, Intramuros, Manila, and the TV operations at the brand new Roxas Boulevard building in Pasay City. In the late 1950s, Don Eugenio's son, Jenny Lopez saw the potential of TV and radio to reach and link Filipinos across the archipelago. By the mid-1960s, the ABS network was leading the radio industry, with stations like DZXL and DZAQ Radio Patrol in the Manila area, which featured journalists like Ernie Baron, Bong Lapira, Orly Mercado, Joe Tarek, Mario Garcia, Jun Ricafrente, Bobby Guanzan, and Ray Langit, and various other stations nationwide. ABS also made breakthroughs in the TV industry by achieving the country's first color TV broadcast, first satellite feed, during remarkable events including the Man on the Moon, Ruby Tower Collapse, interment of Robert Kennedy and the U.S. presidential elections, and first use of videotape, among others. It featured top shows then, such as Your Evening with Pilata and Tawag ng Tangalan, the country's first comedy show Buhay Artista, first Philippine game show, What's My Living and the first noontime show Student Canteen, among others. It was also pioneering in marathon election coverage in 1967 when the TV and radio stations of the network aired election updates for 36 hours sharp, making it a national first. On 15 June 1961, Eugenio Lopez Jr. built the first provincial TV station in Cebu, based in Mandau, airing four hours with the tallest tower, in that time, measuring 216 feet. Within weeks, another TV station in Dagupan opened its doors followed by the first broadcasts in Negros Island, through Bacolod, in 1963. Western Visayas had its first station in Iloilo City in 1964, the Soxigen region then followed up with the opening of its own regional station in 1965 and Baguio and Davao followed suit in 1967. Two years later, the network's first test color broadcasts began with the help of the Radio Corporation of America. Color broadcasts started in November 1966, the first in the Philippines and Southeast Asia as the network was tagged as the first in color television, with full color broadcasting beginning in 1971 at all national television stations. On 18 December 1968, ABS CBN opened its new broadcast center on Bohol Avenue, renamed as SGT. It's Guerra Avenue in 1989, Quezon City, where it still stands today. At the time, it was the most advanced facility of its kind in Asia. The station again made breakthroughs by using the first live satellite transmissions from abroad, foremost of which was the first moon landing in 1969 and in the 1968 Summer Olympics in Mexico the year before. The network enjoyed a big portion of the ratings and won various awards and recognitions from different organizations. The network pioneered the first all-national news simulcasts also in the same year as well. By 1972, the ABS-CBN network owned and operated two television stations and seven radio stations in Manila, 14 radio stations and three television stations in the provinces. Martial Law Era The station suffered a setback upon the declaration of martial law. On midnight of the 22nd of September 1972, a day after the declaration of martial law, ABS-CBN and its affiliate stations were seized. Jenny Lopez, the president of the company, was imprisoned and held without trial for five years until he and his cellmate Sergio Osmeña III launched a daring jailbreak in 1977 and sought asylum in the United States together with his family. The network itself was taken over by Roberto Benedicto, a presidential crony, who used the Broadcasting Center at Bohol Avenue, then renamed as Broadcast Plaza, as the home of MBS-4. 
Channel 2 would later be relaunched as the BBC2, with a completely new logo, slogan, and a theme song from Jose Mari Chan entitled, Big Beautiful Country, and sung by various artists. BBC2 later moved to new headquarters in Broadcast City, also in Diliman, Quezon City, in 1978. The network's radio stations were also affected with BBC and Radio Philippines Network operating several of the stations. Capture of Broadcast Plaza, MBS-4 At the height of the People Power Revolution, military reformists, believing that television would be a powerful tool to aid the revolution, attacked and took over the ABS-CBN Broadcasting Center. On 24 February 1986, former ABS-CBN talents put the station back in the air and televised the drama of the unfolding uprising, thereby contributing to the strength of the revolt. BBC2, on the other hand, ceased operations after reformists shut down its transmitter on the following day as Channel 2 frequency was turned over to the Lopezes on July 16, 1986. Rebirth and growth on 28 February 1986, after the revolutions, Jenny Lopez returned to the country after self-exile in the United States and started rebuilding from what was left of the station. Recovery was difficult and resources were low, hence, former ABS-CBN employees Freddie Garcia, Ben Aniceto and Roly Cruz was brought in to rework the station. Programming. Thus, the channel began to rebroadcast to viewers once again starting September 14 of the same year. Anisato, who worked as the program director for radio and television of the network and station manager of Channel 2 in the 1970s, was served as the first vice president and general manager of ABS-CBN upon the network. As reopening from 1986 to 1987, on the 1st of March 1987, Channel 2 was relaunched with the live musical special, The Star Network, Ang Pagbabalik Ng Bichuan, The Return of the Star, which noted for the then brand new numerical white tri-ribbon Channel 2 logo with a white rhomboidal star. From 1988 to 1993, the ribbons were tri-colored in red, green, and blue as a centerpiece of the network's revival. By 1988, ABS-CBN had regained its foothold in Philippine TV ratings from dead last number five to being number one again nationally, as a result of the rebranding. Within the year, ABS-CBN also beefed up its news programs with TV Patrol, anchored by a team of newsreaders composed of now former Vice President Noli de Castro, Mel Tianco, Frankie Evangelista, and Angelique Lazo, with the late Ernie Barron telling the daily weather forecast. Other reputable news programs followed, such as Magangdang Gabi, Bayan and Hoy Gissing. The entertainment programs of ABS-CBN were also revamped with series that previously aired on RPN 9 and IBC 13, Eat Bulaga, Oki Ka Ferry Co., The Sharon Cuneta Show, Coney Reyes on Camera, while producing original content, The Maricel Soriano Drama Special, Palabasa La Lake, Home Along Da Riles. Another feature of its return to the top of the ratings is the introduction of the live-action Sentai and Tokusatsu show formats from Japan, with Bayaman, Goggle V. Gavin and Shader, the latter the first ever tokusatsu program to be aired in English and Filipino to Philippine television full-time after a brief appearance on RPN. Filipino dubbed anime programs, another network and Philippine television first, would only begin in the transition to the 1990s, and 1987's Hikari Sentai Maskman, aired by the network, was first ever Sentai program to dub in Filipino. Within months after the relaunch in Manila, the revived network also restarted regional programs and broadcasting starting in Baguio, Cebu, Bacolod, and Davao, and later in Zamboanga and Cagayan de Oro. Within the 1990s, the network also helped open new stations in other parts of the country, while reopening stations used before. In January 1989, ABS-CBN began shifting to satellite broadcast, enabling the entire country to watch the same program simultaneously. This was also the very year when the network began international broadcasts to Guam and Saipan, Northern Marianas, also via satellite, yet another first for Philippine and Asian television. At the same time, the network began to increase the number of local TV programs being aired and produced. Slowly, the station inched its way to financial recovery, which it achieved by 1990, regularly garnering around 70% of the market. 
In 1992, AVCBN Talent Center, now Star Magic, was formed and in 1993, AVCBN launched Star Cinema as the company began to diversify. In 1995, Star Records, now Star Music, was launched. In that year, AVCBN also launched their own website abs-cbn.com, the first Filipino television network in the World Wide Web and was created by its IT department Internet Media Group IMG, which later became AVCBN Interactive until its merger in 2015. On 30 March 1998, AVCBN Holdings Corporation was incorporated as World Tech Holdings Corporation for the primary purpose of issuance of Philippine Depository Receipt PDR, and the acquisition and holding of shares of AVCBN Corporation. Its Philippine Depository Receipt PDR, is traded in the Philippine Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol ABSP. Jenny Lopez died of cancer on 29 June 1999, in the United States. This happened six months before the network celebrated the millennium by unveiling a new logo and inaugurating its millennium transmitter in the corporation grounds, resulting in a clearer signal for its television and radio stations in Mega Manila. In 2002, Finance Asia ranked AVCBN as the eighth best managed company in the Philippines in its Asia's Best Companies 2002 Survey. The survey covers the performance of the top companies in 10 countries in Asia. Finance Asia polled institutional investors and equity analysts for this survey. On 27 May 2010, the conglomerate dropped the word broadcasting from its corporate name. Expansion since the 1990s, AVCBN has expanded into various successful media and entertainment ventures such as talent development and management, star magic, film and television production and distribution, star cinema, music and video recording, publishing, and distribution, star music, print publishing, AVCBN publishing, new media, AVCBN digital media, pay TV, AVCBN cable channels, international television distribution, AVCBN global, Telecommunications, AVCBN Convergence, San Francisco International Gateway, and Sky Cable, Sports Programming, AVCBN Sports, Post Production, Roadrunner, Dissolved in 2013, Home TV Shopping, O Shopping, and Theme Park Play Innovations. On 24 September 1994, AVCBN signed a historic deal with Panamsat to bring the first trans Pacific Asian programming to some 2 million Filipino immigrants in United States. This deal would later gave birth to the Filipino channel which is now available globally. The company has also syndicated its programs for international audience through its AVCBN International Distribution Division. Among the programs that gained popularity abroad are Pangako Sa, Yo, K Tagal Kong Hinante, Lobo, Sana Malat Muli, Kahit Icing Saglit, and Be Careful With My Heart. AVCBN had a failed venture in online gaming industry in the Philippines through its now defunct subsidiary AVCBN Multimedia, Inc. The subsidiary was the owner of Get Amped and Amped Casual Games, the Philippine operator of Tantra Online, War Rock, Cronus, Ragnarok Online, and PopCap Games. Another failed venture was the $5 million deal with the now defunct social network site Multiply. In 2005, AVCBN International acquired the Richmond, California-based telecommunications port company San Francisco International Gateway from Laurel Space and Communications. San Francisco International Gateway provides satellite communications services through its 2.5-acre facility consisting of 19 satellite dish antennas and 9 modular equipment buildings. In 2007, AVCBN International launched MYX, the first and the only Asian-American youth music channel in the United States. It was later reformatted in 2011 to become a general entertainment channel targeted to the Asian-Americans. In 2008, AVCBN International opened its state-of-the-art studio in Redwood City, California. The Copamelia Network in 2003, during the 50th anniversary of Philippine television, AVCBN launched its present brand name, Copamelia, literally means, a member of the family. Its international unit AVCBN Global Limited plans to undertake an initial public offering IPO the following year and might list on the Singapore Stock Exchange to help finance its expansion plans. The network celebrated its golden anniversary in 2003. 
The network held its Capamilia homecoming, which gathered over 4,000 former employees and talents for a grand reunion at ABS-CBN's compound in Bohol Avenue, Quezon City. The network also launched a promo called Treasure Hunt, where the people were invited to bring their oldest television, radio sets, microphones, and posters. The network also celebrated its 16th year reign in the TV ratings, with 13 of their shows included in the top 15 daily programs in TV. ABS-CBN also launched several new shows such as Meteor Garden. The company also did a nationwide caravan, showcasing the network's talents. On 19 October 2003, the network held a month-long celebration of ABS-CBN and Philippine TV's 50th year. The station produced two commemorative documentaries about the station's contribution in news and entertainment. Sa Mata ng Balita encapsulated some of the most unforgettable, most remarkable, and most celebrated landmarks of the last 50 years as captured by television news. 50 Taong Lagawan, the Pinoy TV history, on the other hand, was the first extensive television documentary done about the history of Philippine television and the evolution of Philippine entertainment. For the celebration. S finale, the broadcasting giant capped its 50th anniversary with a spectacular extravaganza dubbed as Capamilia, ABS-CBN at 50, held at the Philippine International Convention Center PIC, in Pasay City. It was hailed as one of the biggest media events of the year. The Lopez-led network rolled out the red carpet to welcome its high-profile guests from the business, advertising and media sectors, politics, members of the diplomatic community, with many of the society's luminaries and glitterati. Valued friends and supporters of the network throughout the five decades also attended the Grand Affair. The network S. Official 50 Year Station ID won an award for excellence in the 2004 Golden Quill Festival. Recent developments In 2008, ABS-CBN celebrated the 55th year of Philippine television. A new station ID entitled, Beyond Television, was launched. The anniversary TV plug depicts the growth of ABS-CBN from a small television station that started in 1953 into a media conglomerate that has businesses beyond television. It is also on this year that the Wall Street Journal Asia ranked ABS-CBN as the seventh most admired company of the Philippines and third in the Innovation Award category for its innovation in Internet TV with the now defunct TFC Now service. On the 26th of April 2009, ABS-CBN is the only media company to be cited as one of the country's top 15 listed companies in corporate governance, as shown by an annual survey of the Institute of Corporate Directors (ICD). It was the only media company to garner a score of 90% or higher in the 2008 Corporate Governance Scorecard, a survey of corporate governance practices among 172 publicly listed companies in the country. In 2011, ABS-CBN announced the development of a state-of-the-art studio complex in San Jose del Monte, Bulacan for a projected cost of 6 to 7.5 billion pesos. A 15-hectare lot in San Jose del Monte, Bulacan was acquired earlier that year for 75 million pesos. In 2014, it was announced that the studio complex will consist of 10 sound stages and backlots. The company planned to build at least two sound stages a year for a cost of 600 million pesos or 300 million pesos for each sound stage. On 1 January 2013, Charo Santos Concio was appointed as the new chief executive officer of the company taking over Gabby Lopez. Lopez remains the chairman of the company. On the 28th of May 2013, ABS-CBN Corporation, through its subsidiary ABS-CBN Convergence Inc., formerly known as Multimedia Telephony Inc., signed a network sharing agreement with Globe Telecom for a new mobile telephony service in the country. The agreement includes the sharing of assets including switches, towers, servers, and frequencies. ABS-CBN is expected to spend between 2 and 3 billion pesos for the next two years to build up its telco business. 
The plan has been approved by the National Telecommunications Commission and now operates as ABS CBN Mobile. In July 2013, ABS CBN started the development of Kidzania Manila Family Entertainment Center in Bonifacio Global City in Taguig. On 30 May 2014, ABS CBN and its current president and CEO Charo Santos Concio received the Gold Stevie Awards for the categories Services Company of the Year Philippines and Woman of the Year at the Asia Pacific Stevie Awards held in Lot Hotel. Seoul, South Korea. ABS CBN also received the coveted Gold Stevie Awards for the category Company of the Year, Media and Entertainment at the 11th Annual International Business Awards, EBA, which was held in Paris, France in October 10. As a result of the win, ABS CBN also won the vote based People's Choice Stevie Awards for favorite companies in the media and entertainment category, while their chairman Eugenio Lopez III received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the KVP. On 19 March 2015, Finance Asia ranked ABS CBN as the third best mid cap company in the Philippines. ABS CBN is the only Filipino media company included on Asia's Best Companies 2015 list of Finance Asia. Also in this year, ABS CBN was included on the 2015 Top Companies Report of Jobstreet.com, which ranked the country's top employers. ABS CBN is ranked 7th on the list. On 1 January 2016, Carlo L. Cadigbach was appointed as the new president and chief executive officer of the company taking over Charo Santos Concio who have succeeded her mandatory retirement age of 60. Concio will still be the network's chief content officer, president of the newly created ABS CBN University, and executive advisor to the chairman of the company. One month later, the network also announced the appointment of head for Free TV Maria Socorro Badanes as the COO for broadcast of ABS CBN effective 1 February 2016. In 2016, ABS CBN Corporation is the only media company included on the top 10 2016 top companies of Jobstreet.com in the Philippines, ranking at number 10. These companies are chosen by Jobstreet.com as the most desired employers in the country. On 19 April 2018, during the company's annual stockholders meeting, the ABS CBN Board of Directors voted in favor and elected Eugenio Gabi Lopez III as the Chairman Emeritus and his cousin, Chief Technology Officer Martin Mark Lopez as his successor as Chairman of the Network. Gabby Lopez will be the second executive to be elected as Chairman Emeritus, succeeded his late father, Eugenio Jenny. Lopez Jr. branding the ABS CBN logo features three main elements, the vertical line rooted on a horizontal origin, the three extending circles, and the text ABS CBN. The vertical line or bar represents a tower, broadcasting tower, as well as dignifying the company and representing its core business of broadcasting, with the circles symbolizing a transmitter tower's signals, and representing the red, green and blue or RGB colors which makes up a pixel shown on the television. The three divisions of the Philippines, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, are also denoted by the three circles, as well as its wide presence, range for imagination, and its pioneering, embracing, spirit. One unique thing about ABS-CBN's logo is that it has a horizontal version, usually used to save space as the main vertical logo usually takes up more space than the horizontal one. The design of the horizontal version of the logo contains the ABS-CBN text, split into two parts, ABS and CBN, without the dash connecting them, and ABS-CBN's iconic symbol squeezed in between them. The first logo to have a horizontal version going by this design was the logo launched in 1986, the year they relaunched their operations after 14 years of hibernation under martial law and Marcos authoritarian rule. From 1986 up until 2014, the elements of the horizontal logo, text, and symbol were evenly sized. In the 2014 version of the horizontal logo, the symbol of ABS CBN was squeezed in between was slightly larger than the ABS Alto Broadcasting System and CBN Chronicle Broadcasting Network names. Channel 2 Since 1969, the network has started using a channel logo beginning on DZAQ TV with the early Channel 2 logo for use as a promotion from 1969 to 1972 as the family channel. The frequency was later awarded to BBC as DWWX TV from 1973 to 1986, and had a different logo used. Channel 2 is currently used as the frequency of the flagship station of ABS-CBN in Metro Manila.
ABS CBN introduced an innovation to the Channel 2 logo from 1986 to 1992. At first, the Channel 2 logo is introduced into ABS CBN after the dissolution of BBC in March. The features of the first Channel 2 logo is a wing shaped blue crest with a white curve at the top and a white line as a tail. The Broadway 2 logo was used from 1986 to 1987. It has a slogan name Watch Us Do It Again, as the station ID aired since the network's revival. After six months of carefully selected plans, the first Tri Ribbon 2 logo laced with a rhomboidal star came to be on 1 March 1987. The Tri Ribbon 2 logo's color is white carried the slogan The Star Network when it aired as a station ID to reclaim the dominance in TV ratings, using the Scanimate system that it took over from the private-owned BBC2. By 1988, the ribbons in the Tri Ribbon 2 logo were changed into red, green and blue stripes from the three white stripes it first used. Truly, the Tri Ribbon 2 logo was accidentally coming from a shooting star in the form of the number 2 in the idents which came out. Similarly, most numerical channel logos within this slogan have a star and versions came into regional TV channels like 3 DYCB TV in Cebu and D3 ZO TV in Baguio, 4 DYXL TV in Bacolod and DXAS TV in Davao, and other regional stations. The Tri Ribbon 2 was also used on microphone flags until 2000, the celebration of the new millennium. Sarah Manic. The Saramanic, a legendary bird in Philippine folklore was first used in 1966 to identify color broadcasts, somewhat similar on how the NBC peacock has been utilized. In 1993, which happens to be the Chinese year of the rooster, ABS CBN relaunched the Saramanic with a new station ID featuring the legendary bird. The Saramanic ID became utmostly associated with the channel that ABS CBN opted it to become the station's mascot. ABS CBN later named its new 24 hour news channel the Saramanic News Network, the precursor of the ABS CBN News Channel. It was revived again in 2004 to promote regional broadcasts nationwide. Evolution of ABS CBN logos The logo of pre merger Alto Broadcasting System had a symbol composed of a transmitter with a circle denoting its signals, a precursor of sorts to ABS CBN current logos. The logo of pre-merger Chronicle Broadcasting Network, on the other hand, had three blocks and the CBN letters in them. In 1961, the ABS CBN brand was introduced and its first logo had a big letter B, unifying the names ABS and CBN, in a box placed between their channel numbers 3 ABS. DZAQ TV, and 9 CBN's DZXL TV. A modified version of ABS. Symbol was launched in 1963, composed of a triangle denoting a transmitter tower and four circles denoting its signals in the same vein as the 1953 logo, enclosed in a rounded box and with the ABS CBN text above, in a form that would evolve over the years. The logo soon after took on its current iteration. A vertical line, denoting a transmitter tower, with three concentric circles signifying Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, enclosed in a square frame, in 1967. At that time, it was rendered in black and white because color TV, despite the fact that it was ABS CBN that introduced it the previous year, WASN. T common yet and the logo style at that time separated ABS and CBN. S names, putting ABS. Name on top and CBNs on the bottom. The network used a colored variation of the 1967 logo when color television introduced and they relaunched operations in 1986, after 14 years of forced closure under martial law. The logo had the three rings detached from the transmitter and colored the three rings in red, green, and blue, and substituted the square frame with an outlined black box. The RGB colored logo has remained relatively unchanged since then, though two modifications in 1993, the 40th anniversary of Philippine TV, and 1996, ABS-CBN's 50th corporate anniversary, saw minor tweaks in the letters and the rings and box. The 1st of January 2000, the first day of the new millennium, saw a significantly revamped version of the logo. 
In this version, the outlined black box that enclosed the three rings and the vertical line that maintained their 1996 design was replaced by a gray square, a crystal plane when rendered in 3D, and the ABS and CBN names joined together to form ABS CBN's name, now situated below the symbol. The ABS CBN letters were also given a completely revamped look. The present logo, launched in 2014, is a minimally altered version of the 2000 logo, greatly modifying the ABS CBN text, dropping the once standard serifs on the letters, giving the three RGB rings thicker width and perfected concentricity, and adopting a white square instead of a black or gray one. The rebranding aims to maintain the iconic structure of ABS CBN's logo while at the same time giving it a new look suited for a period of popularity for social and digital media. Subsidiaries References Further reading John A. Lent 1971. Philippine Mass Communication Before 1811 and After 1966. Manila, Philippine Press Institute. ISBN 9780774812264. Lent Jose Luis 1978. Broadcasting in Asia and the Pacific, a Continental Survey of Radio and Television. Philadelphia, Temple University. ISBN 0877220689. Kapasanan ng MGA Broadcaster sa Pilipinas, the 1996 KBP Media Factbook. Makati, Kapasanan ng MGA Broadcaster ng Pilipinas. 1996. Cecile Matutina, 1999. Pinoy Television, The Story of ABS CBN. Quezon City, Benpers Publishing, Inc. ISBN 9719210605. Lent Jose Luis 2000. Philippine Studies Vol. 48, No. 2. Manila, Ateneo de Manila University. Philip Kitley, 2003. Television, Regulation and Civil Society in Asia. London, Routledge. ISBN 9781134431. Lent Jose Luis 2003. Television Across Asia, TV Industries, Program Formats and Globalization. London, Routledge. ISBN 9781134392. Lent Jose Luis 2006. Capitan, Jenny Lopez and the Making of ABS CBN. Quezon City, ABS CBN Publishing, Inc. ISBN 9718161112. Jonathan Woodier, 2009. The Media and Political Change in Southeast Asia, Karaoke Culture and the Evolution of Personality Politics. Cheltenham, Edward Elgar Publishing. ISBN 9781848446199. Horace Newcomb, 2014. Encyclopedia of Television 4-Volume Set. London, Routledge. ISBN 9781135194. Lent Jose Luis 2014. Graham Turner, Koichi Iwabuchi, 30 November 2014. Television Histories in Asia, Issues and Contexts. London, Routledge. ISBN 9780415855365. Jonathan Corpus on May 15, 2015. The Poverty of Television, The Mediation of Suffering in Class-Divided Philippines. Anthem Press. ISBN 9781783084067. External links. Ella G. Mangabot, October 17, 2003. Years of Service to the Filipino, The ABS CBN Story. Philippine Daily Inquirer James Hookway, June 23, 2004. 
Filipino broadcaster ABS-CBN finds growing audience overseas. The Wall Street Journal David Englander, October 15, 2014. ABS-CBN, Philippine broadcaster sends strong buy signal, shares of the Philippines' largest TV broadcaster can rise near 50% as the country continues its rapid growth. Barons David Englander, March 11, 2015. ABS-CBN, Philippine broadcaster can rise 25% Philippines' largest TV broadcaster has surged since we recommended shares last year. Stay long. Barons Ramon R. Tuazin, April 30, 2015. Philippine Television, That's Entertainment. National Commission for Culture and the Arts Mark Yu, August 26, 2016. ABS-CBN may be worth your investment, the Philippine media broadcasting leader offers some value. GuruFocus.com Chris Schnabel, July 5, 2017. Fast Facts, What You Should Know About ABS-CBN Rappler Media Ownership Monitor Philippines, Media Companies, a Duopoly Rules by Vera Files and Reporters Without Borders.